Hello there, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. As you can see, I've already fired up a game. This is basically right after firing up a career game. In career, you basically have to take care of science, you have to take care of uh, funds and everything. And basically, uh, in Kerbal Space Program, the goal, of course, is to, well, have a successful space program with help of space planes built here and track the spaceships. Also, with the funds here, as you can see, this is uh, where you get your contracts. Launch a new vessel, that is, well, fairly easy, you can accept that contract. Altitude record of 5000 meter, fairly easy as well, you get some, I have no idea what this prestige or vacation. I have no idea what that is used for actually, I think it's to get better contracts, but we're just going to accept all of these because they are things that we will be doing sooner or later, and we're getting a little bit of extra money. But uh, the first, or this first episode is going to be focusing mostly on just getting ourselves some, uh, some science points in order to get better parts so that we can visit, well, planets, get into a stable orbit, uh, things like that. We'll be able to be most likely visiting uh, the poles. So, as you can see, we're not going to actually do a launch, we're just going to uh, get a crew report from in there. We're going to keep the data, we're going to eva or get out of here, let go, and we are going to report from this surface. We're going to keep that data, we're going to take a surface sample, as you can see, and get science from that. And then we're just going to recover. And I'm pretty sure since I didn't actually enter the vessel, I have to recover the, well, cockpit more or less on the, on the zone. As you can see, it untailed spacecraft, and we can just recover that. It'll give us a little bit of science. And as you can see, yeah, I'm getting back the money for, uh, that I used to create that. So basically, keeping, uh, keeping the stuff alive is going to be important here. And let's see, no new, no, no new ones. So I guess what we're actually going to do here is just put together a, well, fairly simple rocket. We're going to use all of these, I think. And of course, this thing, because we don't really have anything else. I'm not really planning to do anything spectacular here. I'm just going to do the first flight, and I think one parachute should be enough to land this. Uh, it could be some damage to the lower part and the engine, but it should be fine. It's actually fairly cheap thing here, 2722, so it's not it's not expensive. Later on we'll also get automatic stabilizers for the flight itself, but uh, right now we're going to have the issue with me having to control this craft itself, but since, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward, so it shouldn't have any, any problem flying. We'll get a throttle up to full, which you do with the shift button, and once I hit space here, as you can see, the, uh, the uh, launch sequence, or the trust will activate, but unfortunately I have to do this, otherwise the parachute will activate as well, and that would end up in a horrible, horrible crash, so we don't really want to do that. Now the first goal is just to get a little bit high up, so we'll just fire. As you can see, we're climbing uh, pretty rapidly here, to be perfectly honest, which is uh, of course really, really useful. Unfortunately, we have uh, launch confirmed, launch new vessel, as you can see there, it's already starting to wear off, and this is... Uh, yeah, we're going to cut the engines here. This is due to uh, this is due to me not having anything. I'm trying to control this myself, which, to be perfectly honest, is quite an annoying thing. You really have to use this nav ball if you want to try and control a vessel yourself. Otherwise, you're definitely going to get into trouble. And as you can see, yeah, I'm not really stable at all. The goal is to get up to 5,000 meters, and we have actually done that. So I'm just going to cut the engines again. We're almost out of power, so I might as well. Pull fuel, so might as well just burn that out. As you can see here, we set an altitude record of 5,000 meters, got 2,293, some prestige. Unfortunately, we didn't actually get anything really useful. We could do, unfortunately, of course, let's get a crew report. And we're actually going to transmit. Well, sorry, we're not going to transmit. We <laughs> didn't have any, any useful things here. We're going to keep that crew report and we're going to speed things along so I can actually get to get back to the land, so to speak. Uh, we're going to be slowed down a lot here by air. I don't have any mods installed, uh, so we should be perfectly alright. The air is going to slow us down quite a bit, so we don't really have anything to worry about there. Of course, uh, we kind of have to, uh, well, use the parachute, but as you can see, it won't actually deploy until my altitude reaches 500 meters. So we're still going, there we go, 500 meters have been reached. And with that speed, I'm pretty sure that my uh, 
my engine here is actually going to explode, so let's just speed it up a little bit, get a little bit closer to Earth, or Kerbin, after it's cooled here. And there we go. Boom. Engine exploded, but uh, that's it. As you can see, the parachute was not strong enough to actually uh, make sure that the engine didn't explode. But I'll be able to recover most all the other parts, so it shouldn't be an issue. And we're going to get a report from here, and we're going to take a surface sample. So as you can see, I'm getting uh, I'm getting a little bit of science here that will be useful in the future. We'll cover my guy here. There we go. Uh, now that I think about it, I could probably get some more signs from these by uh, taking an EVA report and storing it in the capsule itself, but I'm unfortunately not smart enough to do that. I believe I can actually do some science now. Let's check. I really want the automatic stabilizers. Now, let's see. I can do some science. It costs five points, which we actually have. Get some fuel tanks and a decoupler. Basically, allows me to do a lot of stuff. Now, do I need a... I don't need this, this is more for other, well, other kinds of travel. Solid fuel booster rocket, uh, good engine. Well, I think we'll take survivability first. And I don't have actually the points for this, so we'll wait with that. But as you can see, yeah, we'll get the inline reaction wheel. Unfortunately, it also requires me to take stability, and this is what we're going for. It will allow me to uh, toggle the SIS, which is more or less automatic control of the vessel. Now, as you can see, I also got a uh, some new missions here, stack the coupler. These things are kind of annoying, but uh, as you can see, yeah, some of them offer a lot of prestige, some of them offer, well, this doesn't really offer anything, so I'm, we're going to decline that one. And so I got a ton of new ones. So a fuel booster orbiting, so basically I have to take one of those big uh, rods up high. So, again, these missions have kind of some, well, very specific pointers, but uh, I don't think I want to do them. Before you've got a lot more, I'm probably going to do something that's actually worth something like this. It's going to cost me more to take the uh, rocket up into space, most likely. So, I think for the time being, we'll not be doing too much of this. Uh, earlier, I believe you got a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, science points for doing those things also. So we have 22,000 meters as our next target. Now, let's see here. If I do this, add an extra fuel tank. This, and uh, going to. Uh, I'm going to just play around a little bit. This, this rocket is going to be quite expensive. I think about it. I'm going to lose the engine again if I do not drop something here. I think what we're going to do is actually jettison the. Uh, No, it doesn't actually make any sense. If if the engine explodes, that bit is actually cheaper than using the coupler, I think. So let's do that, and we're going to place a solid fuel booster underneath that, just for fun. And again, yeah, we're going to move the this thing down there, not to I want to use the parachute and everything else at the same time. I'm not sure how much. 250, 15. Well, I don't think we actually need that. We're going to just. I'm going to use this and see how high we can actually get. Again, didn't really get anything used. What I could do, of course, is slap a couple of these on. Uh, we might actually do that just to test them out. So we're going to slap a couple of these on right here. No, I can apparently not slap them on there, so we'll slap them on there. I think they're approaching the hatch a little bit. We kind of want to allow our curb in here to get out, so we're going to place one there. I'm going to place one on the other side. Again, this is going to make me a little bit unstable, but I should be fine, I hope. So, uh, let's test this out. Um, last thing I might actually notice or say here is that the different biomes on Kerbin itself will actually give you quite a bit of science. So, basically just flying around gathering science is probably wise. And for that, we probably want to build a space plane. I might build a test space plane later. But uh, well, after this one, we can try and use. But before that, I kind of just want to do some, well, rather simple stuff to get a little bit more science going, which should allow me to, uh, well, do a lot more stuff. I'm not really sure how high we can get here, but as you can see, I'm kind of focusing here on trying to keep the uh, pointer within the, on the white dot. That is basically straight up. So as long as you keep it in that area, you should be 
Yeah, you should be fine. And in this case, I think I'm going to want to wear off in this direction here. And if all start setting out in a spin, it's going to be kind of hard to stabilize. So yeah, I think we're just going to go straight up for the time being. It should be fairly alright. Hopefully I can set some altitude records. Yeah, this thing... I'm not trying to do this on purpose, but I'm a really bad pilot. Not good with that nav ball. But I definitely need to get my hands on something, yeah. That, uh... That, uh... That automatic stabilizer. It's going to be a really important task. But I did at least complete the mission of set an altitude record of 22,000 meter. Now where are we going to crash land? Actually, could crash land over there. I think I might have preferred to actually crash land in the mountains or, well, over here. I'm a little bit unsure how many biomes there are, but I can see at least desert. We have the mountains here. We have some bigger ones over here. Yeah. Then we have the North and South Pole, so there's a lot of places that I can visit for a little bit of science if I have the money for that, and I'm pretty sure I do. Should be fine. But let us just go for, well, the crash. Uh, yeah, I'm actually slowing down, as you can see. That is why the this one is actually moving. I am in the atmosphere, and the result of that is, well, slowing down one. Being affected by gravity is two. And number three is that we, well, are falling. That is actually going to change where I land. I'm getting closer to the highlands slash mountains. That could be interesting. A little bit of warning though, if you stick or if you stay in that uh, in that screen with the uh, with the uh, with map. Time will not automatically slow itself once you enter atmospheres or a low height, something like that. Right now, I'm pretty sure they actually do, but if you use uh, things like that, you're going to get into trouble really, really quickly. Again, this is actually a speed I think we can survive at. The only thing I didn't actually consider here is the length of the rocket. It's going to, well, fall over, and that could potentially kill my Kerbal. I might actually lose Jab already. Uh, I had it happen once before, it was horrible. Nightmare. So let us hope that engine explodes. It should actually give me a bit of a bit of a better balance. Now we are falling and nothing exploded. But of course falling has a another problem. And that problem is uh, very simple actually. Let's see here, I'm going to board. There we go. As you can see here, command pod, the Eva has been added. So we're going to get off here, and we're going to take another EVA report, and of course a uh, surf sample. Now Jebby decided that it was good, a good time to take a nap. So that is uh, that is wonderful, but basically just getting me a little bit of science every time. A little bit there, I've got a little bit of, well, actually got quite a bit of reputation due to Jeb surviving. They didn't have any faith in me, and we're going to look up the vessel. There we go, tiny bit of science. Helps at least, and of course, also we get a lot of get a lot of money back, which is quite possibly the most important part of uh, uh -huh. of all of this. Al new altitude record, six thousand meters. We'll accept that. Uh, again, not really anything I want to take. This thing could actually be interesting because, as you can see, it pays quite a bit, quite a lot of prestige. Uh -huh. uh, it's easy to do, <laughs> not too good. To actually, well, say that. I think some of these missions actually been nerfed a little bit too much, perhaps. But we are going to accept this one. I'm most likely going to pull that off, off once we yeah, start getting out into orbit and things like that. But first, I have a little bit of science to do. In this case, I'm kind of tempted to take this. Give me a science junior. And science junior, I'm not actually quite there yet. Science junior will give me a lot of. Uh, a lot of potential tech upgrades which would be important. Uh, but if I want to get up high, I need this thing. So we're going to do that first. We're going to upgrade that. Then we're going to get that inline reaction here, which would be really, really useful. 
Again, it might just be to my bad rocket science, but that is what we're going for. So we need 90 science points. Yeah, for these two up and running. And once I, I should probably save up for science junior, because I can actually do some like, reports from well everywhere with that. What we will do, however, is most likely build ourselves some sort of space plane here, which is going to get a little bit weird. And I'm most likely going to be aiming at visiting biomes next time. Let's see here. Do that and want to launch. Now the funny thing here is both runways actually count as their own different biome. So uh, can actually do signs of both of them and that is actually what we are going to do. We're going to get a crew report, we're going to get Eva, we're going to Eva report, we're going to get back in, and with that everything has been stored. Now we're going to get off, walk a little bit of distance, take a new Eva report. Take a surface sample, and then we're going to recover him. So yeah, I definitely should take the science junior. My bad, but uh, I should be I should actually have enough to get that pretty soon. As you can see, I'm already back up at 30. So let us recover this vessel, 37. So uh, if I can just get a little bit higher into space, I should be fine. I really should. So I think what we're going to do here is take one last. Uh, one last launch of the day. That should be fine. Uh, potentially, I could also use this to test that engine splash down a Kerbin, which is basically just landing into the water. Uh, we might as well do that. It could actually be fun to just test that out. So, the funny thing also is if you actually use or accept to test something, uh, if you actually accept to test something, the uh, part will be uh, available to you even if you haven't researched it, so you can definitely use that to your advantage. Now what am I trying to do here? Nope, nope, nope. I'm not completely, uh, well, confident with my controls. As you can see, I don't think I've unlocked that thing, but even so, I get it. So we're going to place that on, we're going to dump that on the bottom, and going to need a parachute because we're going to crash crash last land into the sea or well, that's at least what we're going to try to do now as you know or may not know the sea is actually pretty damn close just over there somewhere as you can see we're basically at the sea all I really need to do is do a little bit of flying so again instead of actually well, in order to actually test that thing, we need to activate it from the staging. So, if I do this... Oh, 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 Nope. I need to get my nose up in the air before we crash. Yeah, well, this works. We're going towards this sea, so I should be happy. This is one of the most uncontrollable rockets I have ever flown. But again, I think it's just partly me being bad at flying. Let's see, uh, where are we going to crash land? We're going to crash land into the sea, so I'm happy about that. But we kind of want to get a little bit further out land because we are slowing down. And it doesn't really matter where you crash down in the sea. The only real issue here... Is to... Shit. Um, sorry, I kind of forgot here. I would prefer to actually empty my tanks completely reason being that if they are heavy, they will potentially, well, screw over my descent, first and foremost, and by emptying my tanks, I will most likely be able to get a safe landing here. That is really the only thing that I'm worrying about. Let us see if I can crash land this, well, crash land, there's a target later, the moon. Where is my height right now? As I said, I have a recording sign set up right above the, uh, the altitude meter, so that is a hilarious mistake on my part. I would have to stop recording if I wanted to get rid of that, so I'm going to fix that for the next, uh, next part. Let us speed up the percent just a little bit here. Now, just to, just to make sure that everyone is... I think the engine is actually going to explode going to have to do this again, uh, but just to make sure that everything, yeah, or a little bit of a note here, whenever you're flying, the altitude is how high you are over the sea. Basically, you could be on top of a mountain, 
game where... Yeah, that is kind of what I was, uh, was scared of there. Let's see here. Let's get a behavior report. Let's get back in. Uh, yeah, okay, that didn't work. Yeah, I guess we'll overwrite it. We'll take a surface sample with us and we'll get back home. So as you can see, I should have slapped, uh, slapped a couple of extra uh, parrot, well, things on that, uh, parachutes on that vessel, but, uh, doesn't matter. Got a tiny bit of science and a little bit of fun's back. So, um, I'll do a little, well, do the mission before next time, I think, and I'll probably try and build a space plane, test out some designs, and, uh, I'll be visiting biomes next time, so if you don't actually feel that is your, uh, well, cup of tea, then uh, please tell me. And I'm also going to put on the Science Junior and just show how that works next time. But uh, we'll also get the stabilizers, I think. I'll see you next time. Bye.